Great, welcome everyone. Um, just to give you a little bit of background on myself, I am a physical therapist assistant. My name is Veronica Nieto Diaz, and I'm currently very involved in um, the physical therapy organization locally in the area that I'm from. Um, I also am a program director that teaches others how to be a physical therapist assistant. So I um, basically have practiced physical therapy and then a, or what we call a physical therapy practitioner for about 12 years um, to the point that I love talking about it so much that I decided to teach it and run a whole program on teaching others to also become uh, PTAs for short. Um, that way we can continue to grow the field and kind of produce individuals that are very well educated and really interested in the science and the research that um, is important to progressing and making others better um, where we have actual evidence of things that work and things that are efficient so that's just a little background on me but really what this video or what I want to start off what this video is about is how to um, gauge the right intensity for your exercise regimen, okay? So my goal um, for this platform is to really make sure that all individuals out there are able to start an exercise regimen and carry that out safely and effectively because exercise and fitness really is something that everyone should be doing. Kids, older adults, people with morbid morbidities. Um, there is, There has been so much research, a lifetime worth of research that says physical activity can help you live longer, can help you live healthier, can diminish your risk of a lot of diseases. And if you already have things going on, it can help improve those things. Um, I think that people get stuck on the fact that, oh, you can only exercise when you're young and, you know, in your 20s and 30s and healthy, um, or if you didn't start exercising before, you can't exercise now, and that is absolutely false, okay? And um, you can always reach out to me if you really want research or information or articles um, that, that supports that, but I can tell you that um, from my profession that we definitely have that out there. Okay, so I really want to encourage people to start a regimen that is safe for them. And if you're not going to a physical therapist or, or working with a physical therapist assistant, um, I hope that these videos can help you with that. So one important thing that I want to touch on is knowing how intense your activity should be. Okay, it is important to start somewhere, right? So whatever, if you're doing nothing, walking, um, jogging, uh, standing up and sitting down a few times, doing a few motions at your desk, that's definitely better than nothing, okay? But for, for these effects to really um, work, we have to have a certain level of intensity, okay? And so there's so many fitness professionals out there. There's so many YouTube videos or people on this platform that have amazing, amazing videos um, on different workout routines that, that a lot of people will probably like to try. But you, if you're starting a regimen or if you have something else going on physically, have to know your own body and know maybe when to scale back or when to pump it up on the other sense for it to really work to what you want to achieve. Okay. And that is what we call exercise intensity, okay? So exercise intensity. So first thing is knowing how much exercise we need, okay? If we go by CDC guidelines, um, they pretty much say 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity exercise or vigorous or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity exercise. So vigorous is stronger than moderate. And um, obviously if you do stronger intensity exercise, you don't need as much, okay? This is the minimum requirement, all right? So minimum requirement. It's not so bright as I thought it would be. 100 
we're gonna need 50 moderate, 75 vigorous, okay? They also um, recommend at least two days, two days of strength training. So the moderate and vigorous guidelines is talking more about aerobic training, whereas they also recommend additionally at least two days of strength training. Now, if you do enough strength training activities in, in various repetitions, you can still kind of count it as both and consider strength training aerobic training, but you really have to do a lot of repetitions um, for a long period of time for it to be. So we'll just keep these separate for now and say that um, aerobic training is one thing and strength training is another thing. And that so you should have 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic training and two days of strength training, okay? 150 minutes, how you break it down is up to you, okay? If you wanna do 30 minutes, that adds up to 150, that's 30, 60, 90, 120, about five days of 30 minute activities. Um, or if you wanna do 45 minutes, then you maybe have to do four days. If you wanna do an hour, you know, two, three days. So how you break it up is up to you depending on how much time you have, right? Um, and then the two days of training, uh, strength training are incorporated in there somewhere, right? Um, we have to be able to get to these levels to be able to really have effect into increased strength or increase our heart's ability to do work, right? So moderate, vigorous, and then we'll talk about strength training, which should also be at the level of moderate or vigorous. It should not be very, very light activity if you are actually looking to increase strength, right? So let's talk about moderate intensity first, okay? For aerobic activity, which is basically continuous movement for um, you know, a prolonged period of time where you're moving the large muscles of your body kind of nonstop. I mean, you may stop here and there to take a little break, breathe, but you shouldn't be doing an exercise for five minutes and then stop for another five minutes. You're not getting your heart rate up enough to do what we call aerobic exercise. So there has to be kind of a continuous period, 30 minutes of walking, 30 minutes of aerobics class, 30 minutes of swimming, where you're kind of going and going and taking very short breaks for it to be considered an aerobic activity, okay? Um, for it to be moderate intensity, okay, it should mean that you feel enough effort to where you can Speak very lightly, but you're breathing heavily, your breathing rate is going up, or you are, um, or you are breathing, or you're barely able to talk, maybe give some short sentences, and still, again, breathe heavily, okay? That is something that we call the talk test, okay? So there is this thing out there that we use in physical therapy called the Borg scale, okay? The Borg um, rating of perceived exertion. I guess you can say scale, okay? And that Borg scale, you can look it up because, you know, now on days we have online and we can look so many things up. So you can look up the CDC requirements. You can look up the Borg scale. You can look up the top test scale. Okay, which is related to this. Um, that Borg rating of perceived exertion is how much one self subjectively can feel how strong or how hard they're working, okay? So if you're doing your activity and you feel that, you know, you're breathing and you're trying to have a conversation and stuff is still coming out, but it's, you know, you gotta breathe a little bit heavy, that's kind of where you wanna be at in your intensity, okay?
okay? Now, why do we have these subjective scales and this talk test? Because what I consider it moderate intensity for me may not be what you consider moderate intensity for you. If you're just starting an exercise program, okay, um, and you're really, really new to this, like you're not the exercise type, right? Um, it's gonna take you a little while to kind of uh, get used to exercising and tolerate activity, right? So I exercise pretty much every day. I have a lot of activity tolerance because my body is used to doing it. I can do some intense stuff for 30 minutes and I may not feel as tired, where you may just do a walking thing and you already feel tired and that's okay. You can work your way up to any other level, but when you start off, you have to know what's right for you, okay? So if you feel that you're able to kind of carry a light conversation and breathe heavily or just a choppy conversation where you can only get a few words that, out as you're exercising, that is a good way to kind of gauge uh, if you're working in the right place, okay? Yes, I know it's a weird way to look at it because it may mean that you need to talk while you're exercising to kind of see if you're there, but you can kind of feel uh, what that is like, right? So you can be doing activities and think, am I able to kind of clear my, and get my words out or is it a little bit difficult? This is a good level to be at, okay? Vigorous definitely means that you're barely able to get words out and you're kind of <sighs> focusing on your breathing and not really able to talk or or sing, sometimes they put that in the talk test. Um, and that's how you know you're working at the vigorous level. So it's up to you to determine the things that you're doing, how, what it feels like for you, okay? And it's okay if it feels something light, feels moderate for you, because you can work your way up and get better at that, okay? For strength training, um, it's a little different. We have this thing that we call one rep max, okay? So your one rep max um, is basically the heaviest, heaviest, heaviest weight that you can carry, that you can lift it one time and then put it down and not be able to do any more because it was so heavy, okay? That is your one rep max. The only problem with your one rep max is that it's hard to find your one rep max because you, you may need something really heavy for you to feel like that, something that's 50, 60 pounds. And we don't have things walk, um, around our house that you're just gonna carry and be like, oh, okay, this is my one rep max, right? So we work in a certain percentage of our one rep max, okay? Usually 70 to 80% of our one rep max the easiest way to find that is for you to grab a weight or something that gives resistance. For resistance, you can use everyday stuff. You can literally lift a book, a can, whatever, okay? Um, you can use bands, you can use weights, okay? So whatever your resistive thing is, you're gonna do your exercise with it. Let's say bicep curls, okay? And you're gonna count to 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Of course, I'm kind of skipping through some numbers. And you saw how this is easy for me. This weight is not enough for me. If you can count to 10 and do it easily and do about five to 10 more without stopping with, uh, easily, then this is too light. Okay, so this is five pounds for me. Five pounds is too light because I can do 10 and easily do it, okay? But let's say I went and I grabbed the 10 pound weight. One, two, three, four, five. You see, I'm already getting tired. I'm already kind of struggling. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, you see? At the end there, I was still able to do it. I wasn't struggling where I was shaking or giving, but it got harder towards the end of those 10 reps. This tells me that if I really want to strengthen with these kinds of weights, 10 pounds works for me. Because you, for it to be moderate intensity, you should only be able to do about 10, maybe 12 repetitions and it's gonna feel somewhat difficult and you kind of have to push your way through it, okay? And that's how you know you reached your 70 to 80% of your one rep max 
to get a good intensity for gaining strength, okay? So you will have to play with your resistance bands or your, or your weights and keep kind of going up and up and up until you feel that you're at that level. If it's too easy, you're not gonna get any strength from that, okay? You may get what we call muscle endurance, but if you're looking to increase strength, that's too easy for you, okay? If it's so hard that you're like, uh, uh, and you're kind of twisting your body and what we call compensating or like shaking, trying to get it, you can't really, then that's too much for you. If you can do it for 10 reps where towards the end of that 10, maybe 12, you can still do it, but you're kind of trying to really force yourself and it's getting hard, that's where you want to be at. And that's where you know, hey, I have the right intensity for my strength training to really gain strength. So I hope that that helps you gauge your intensity levels so that when you're looking at maybe uh, working with fitness trainers or watching YouTube videos or burn along videos or any videos where you're starting your exercise regimen, you pick the right things for you um, and you don't go too hard, which can cause injury, but you don't go too easy, which is probably not gonna help you meet the effects that you need, okay? Thank you so much for listening.